Hey guys, welcome to the second video in the series of how to script on Roblox. Did you get the answer to the question from the last video? If you didn't, here it is. Before you watch the next video, I want you to figure out the controls on how to move your camera on Roblox Studio. It's a combination of mouse movement and keys on your keyboard. Here's a hint. It's just like playing a game on Roblox. In order to move where your camera is looking in Roblox Studio, you use your right mouse button. Hold it and drag like this and your camera will begin looking at different directions. In order to completely move your camera on Roblox Studio itself, you can use your W, A, S, and D keys, or you can use your arrow keys, and the camera itself will move. Keep this in mind when you're developing your game. Okay, so in this video, you will learn the basics of Roblox Studio and how to set up your very first script. Let's get started. If you look to your right, you'll see two windows. They're called Explorer and Properties. The Explorer is the one on the top right corner. In this window, you'll see everything that's in your game. All the builds that you have, all the scripts that you have, all of the lighting, and everything else in your game is all organized in here. Now inside of the Explorer, you can see that there are many toggles. In scripting terms, we call them services. So that's how I'll refer to them from now on. These services are how Roblox organizes the different things inside your game. I'm going to briefly go through each service and tell you what it means. Workspace. In here, you can find everything that's in the 3D world, like trees, parts, rocks, water, and even other players. Players. This is where your players are stored. When someone joins the game, Roblox will put them into this service, where you can find their username, user ID, and things. Here's a fun fact. In admin commands, you can search for the player the admin wants to use a command on, and they'll be in here. Lighting. In here, you can find everything that has to deal with the lights of the game. This is a very fun toggle, because after you get maps from your builders, you can play around with the service and make them look stunning. Replicated first. In here, you can put the things that you want to load before the game itself loads. Replicated storage and server storage. These services are forms of storage. I won't be getting too detailed into this until later on, but basically you can put things you want to store in here. Server script service. This is the main factory where all of your server scripts are stored and where they'll run. Starter GUI. This is where you put all of your GUIs. GUI stands for graphical user interface, and it consists of things like buttons, frames, scrolling bars, and images. Everything 2D that you want the player to see will be stored in here. Starter Pack. In here, you can put things that will go inside the player's backpack. Some examples are gravity coils, speed coils, and those gear items that you can find in the catalog on Roblox. I'm not going to get into the others until later on, because the services that I just listed are what you'll mostly be using on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, let's shift our attention to the Properties window, which can be found in the bottom right corner. While the Explorer window shows all the stuff that's in your game, the Properties window shows all the individual features about each thing. For example, if I click on the camera on the Explorer window, I can see that the Properties window shows everything about it, like its name, the field of view, and etc. If I click the Lighting section, it shows things like the brightness, the time of day, the fog color, the ambient, and etc. So those two are the Explorer and Property windows. Now I'll show you how you can add an object to your game. If you right click workspace and click insert object, you'll see an enormous amount of different objects that you can play with. For now, let's go with part. As you can see, as soon as I clicked the button, a part showed up. If you remember, all of the 3D things in your game are stored in the workspace. So your part showed up because it's something that's 3D. Now if I click the part, you can see that its properties have showed up on the properties window. Let's play around with the part and see what happens. By the way, while you have a part selected on the explorer, you can press F to focus on it quickly. That'll save you some time when searching for it. If you click its color, you can see that there's a variety of different colors that you can choose from. Changing something in the properties window will update it on your game. It's easy and a lot of fun. The best way to learn about it is to just have fun and mess around with it. So I'll change a bunch of properties and you can see how they change. If you want to get rid of your part, just right click it in the explorer window and click delete. 
Alternatively, you can click the delete key on your keyboard. Note that this isn't the backspace one, but the one that says DEL. It should be next to your backspace key. There's one more window that I want to introduce in this video, and that is the output window. If it isn't showing up for you, click view and click output. We can make things show up in the output window through our scripts. It's mainly used for debugging, which is something that you do when your scripts stop working and you don't know why. Okay now, let's get into your first script. If you remember, I said earlier that your server scripts will go into the service known as server script service. So right click the server script service and add a script. By default, you will see print hello world. Whenever you see the word print followed by these parentheses, it means that something is going to get put into the output window. Inside these parentheses, there's hello world. So that's what'll go into the output window. To test your game, you click the green play button and it'll put you on a server by yourself. To test quickly, you can press F5 on your keyboard. I'm gonna click the play button and in the output window, it should say hello world. And there it is, hello world. So inside of these parentheses, you can add anything you want. Watch, I'm going to add hi YouTube and test it. As you can see, hi YouTube is there. Now what if we want to put more things into the output? Simple, we'll just add more prints. I'll add a bunch of prints now and show you that it'll go right into the output. And there it is. Every time I told the script to print to the output, it did. Not only that, but Studio has been upgraded from past years and now it even shows the line number. See the script colon and number in gray? The number is the line number of the script that printed. Now in game, when you print, there's obviously no output window. So then where does it go? Well, in games you've played, you might have seen developers ask you to check somewhere for the red text. First, however, we'll publish the game so that it's live and we can play on it as if we're playing the actual game. To publish a game, go to File and click Publish. Once it's done, you can go back to Create and click your game to take you to the place where you can play your game live. Also, since your game is private, you'll be the only one who can play. So to see your print code live in your game, enter the game and press the F9 button or type slash console into the chat. Click the server log and you'll see whatever you printed. Cool, right? Well, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new. For the next video, I want you to make a script that puts, hello, I'm watching tutorials by script into the output. Comment below if you can figure out how to do it. The answer will be shown in the next video of the series. Thanks for watching.